So the whole hurricane that moved through really kicked up some big waves and these waves were pretty much to the point that it was almost unfishable. And even earlier in that day, I hooked into a bass that um, was big on a pencil and it got me in, in some bad water and shook my hook because the wave crashed onto the line and it gave it some slack to spit the hook. And uh, unfortunately stuff like this happens. So I knew that there were some big fish around and it was one of those scenarios where there's a lot of current and there's a lot of big waves and the bass were just dogging me under the waves because I couldn't stand close enough to the edge without getting killed by these waves uh, to where these fish were hooking up and getting me underneath these rocks. I'm gonna, yeah, it's pretty decent. I'm gonna have to land him over here. Oh yeah, it's pretty big. I'm so screwed up from earlier today. It's not going to be massive, but it's not tiny either. guy on the fatty glider. Oh, come here. Nice little guy on the fatty glider. Gotta love it. You know, and like, this is still like a fun size fish. He crushed the little guy, the little fatty glider, put up a nice fight. That's awesome, I'll take it. Okay, we'll get a release on it. Fighting really weird. Wow, he might be hooked weird. Oh, there we go. Walk up there. He's going the right way though. Oh, okay. I just loosened up a lot. Try to get out there. Oh, he's barely hooked. Barely hooked. <laughs> He's hooked down. And... Okay. It's a nice one. He's hooked right in the chin. Finally. Whew. Like, that's awesome. That's straight out awesome. I don't even know how big is he.
He's 26 pounds, so it's a big fish. Let's get some pictures of him. He's 26 pounder. We'll get some pictures with him. And we'll get a release on her. Okay, he woke up. I just don't want to land him right there. That's the danger zone. It's not giant. Me. God damn it, turn your light off. And I was uh, hooking into these fish and I kept hooking into them and they would get me under this rock. And you can see in one scenario, I'm trying to pull out some line to get the fish further away from this rock, but he kept sitting right underneath this ledge and I just couldn't deal with that. Okay, let's just not lose any more plug. I don't know how big it is. It might not be that big, but the goal is to just not lose any more plugs for the love of God. Go that way. Go that way. And then we're gonna tighten up. Oh, he's through. He moved out for a moment. I tried to tighten up quick and lean into him, snapped off. And I was just snapping off over and over and over again. And you know, at $25 a plug, you lose like a bunch of plugs, that's gonna suck. And even though like, you know, I'm thankful enough to work with Pumbaa plugs, uh, I hate losing these lures that are so productive and catch so many monster fish. It's one of those things that I ended up losing all my leaders. I was straight tying onto fluorocarbon and which is not the worst thing in the world. And then as the night progressed, uh, I pretty much fished every single plug in my bag and I had this 20 inch rig deal in my bag and I tied that on and I'm fishing this plug first cast, the, fit, the eel or the eel gets hit and one of the hooks gets driven through the eel and out the other side. So there's some serious fish in there and at that point I was like, okay, we probably have a good shot at getting into a serious bass here. So I unhooked it from itself and I staged back up again. I took a few more casts, probably 20 minutes later, I look into this beast of a fish. I fight it textbook. I'm putting a lot of pressure on it early, getting it up and out of that structure. That's it. Oh no. Oh no. What? That's a freaking huge fish! 
and I'm using the waves and I saw my, my timing with the big wave coming and I was able to launch that thing in between this gut of like big rocks on either side. There's a little shallow section, but there's still water there. And he actually went into a decent run in that little shallow section after I got him over the rocks. Scared me to death. But I finally was able to get that thing up and into a tide pool, but that tide pool was washing out pretty quickly. Help me, help me up big boy. And I thought, okay, we're, we're over now. This bass was still very lively because I fought him extraordinarily hard. I got this fish up and into this tide pool and I went to leader the fish and I was starting to pull him up to unhook this giant hook out of its face and it popped. joking are you joking He's gone. Oh my God, if I wasn't tripping. Are you kidding me? And you see me jumping around this tide pool trying to grab this fish and uh, one thing, I, I would love to just hold that fish up. I mean, it was a landed bass. We got into the tide pool. I leadered the fish. I touched the fish. That's not really the thing that makes me so angry about that. Um, and I believe me, I was probably the most angry I've been in a long time about losing that fish. But now that bass has a 20 inch rig deal sh sh shoved into its face. Uh, thankfully it is barbless. So hopefully it just shook that hook. Um, and it probably did and it was probably okay. But uh, it was just unfortunate I couldn't get a good release on that fish. Um, and that happens and at, and that fish was easily 40 pounds. Um, and it's it's frustrating when you, you don't get to hold up those fish, but that was, a th when, it, when it was washing around, it might not have looked like it, but uh, it definitely was. It was a very large fish, probably in that 47, 48 inch size. And I, you know, I blew it. I put too much strain on the leader, on my 65 pound leader, 60 pound leader, and it snapped. Um, where I should have been fishing 80 in that scenario because of the, how big the waves were, uh, it wouldn't have mattered. I could have even bumped up to a 100 pound leader, 100 pound fluorocarbon, and it wouldn't have mattered. Um, and maybe that's what I should have been doing. I should have also probably tied straight to that line. In scenarios like that where you're fishing in a lot of boulders, you can tie a section of like eight to 10 feet of like 80 pound or 100 pound fluorocarbon. And when you're fishing in really bad structure like that, I'll give you more abrasion resistance in that shorter period of time and make it a lot more difficult for that fish to break you off, but also still give you that casting distance and the uh, very, the sensitivity and striking power that braid actually has. That day was, again, really big wave conditions. Um, and I was slightly better prepared, but at the same time, I wasn't as prepared as I was wanting to be. And we were fishing in this area where there's a bunch of white water breaking on one side of these boulders. And it was kind of sweeping through and dumping out in this area where the water was a little bit calmer and the waves weren't as big. And I just, you know, happened to say, okay, this has got to be the spot. This is where everything's kind of just dumping out. We're going to start here. 
And I kid you not, first cast, I hooked into an absolute beast of a fish. Oh my God. Can you get on this side of me? Get on this side of me. Um, and it unfortunately uh, snapped me off in a rock. I wasn't prepared. I was fishing too light of a gear and I was, I been fishing too light of gear and I got that fish up on top of the rock and as the wave sucked out, uh, the line scraped across the rock and instantly snapped it off. And I was pissed. I was really angry. I was so upset because I felt like, okay, that was a fluke and we just, there was one fish there and we had happened to hook that one fish. So I retied and sure enough, the second cast out there, I was getting my giant like 10, 12 inch Danny plug hit all sorts of times. And I didn't hook up that cast, but then the next cast, boom. this one out and we're not losing this fish. We're not losing this fish. There's a bunch of nice ones in here. We're not losing this fish. one we caught the smaller one again but still on the Danny and I think the bite's gonna go off soon so let's get some quick pics of this sucker but we'll get him back okay we're just gonna look at this fish it's on the Pumba plugs Danny the bites going off right now all nice 40 40 class fish crazy bite What I have to believe is the beginning of the fall run. We're gonna try to release this guy as best we can without hurting ourselves in the process. I'm gonna try to reel this Danny like kind of up a little bit. Oh, it's lively as hell. Oh, he's in there. <laughs> yeah, and the thing's kicking hard. Okay, we might just stay here. I was like, you know what, we might as well just fish right here off the rocks that are lower. There are some waves crashing, but it, to what I saw, the waves weren't very big. And we were, you know, I was squatted down, kneeling down, taking pictures with these fish. And sure enough, as soon as I uh, started fishing there, I was, you know, not really paying attention. And then I look up and there's a wall of water coming straight at us. And I screamed at Gus, brace, brace, brace. And I just leaned into that wave as best I could and got completely launched backwards. He got flung even further than me. We ended up in the back of the rocks. I quickly scrambled back up to my feet and only to get absolutely obliterated by another wave. Good thing shit's 
And that's part of the dangers of fishing. We have safety precautions for that reason. I know what to do in those scenarios to hopefully best not hurt myself. Um, and we were able to luckily and thankfully get out of there unharmed and get and continue the bite and uh, end up catching more monster fish. Okay, this is what a good bike finally is like. Shit, he's moving. Yeah. <laughs> this is the worst thing. <sighs> you want to get in front of me? It's a bigger one. Watch out. Jeez. Holy crap. Oh <laughs> this is ridiculous fishing. Oh my gosh, you gotta just love this. Another chunky 40 incher on the Danny plug. Oh my God, the bite is just ridiculous right now. Oh, she's off. She's off. 